This is Raider for On The Raider Entertainment Blog, coming at you with another edition of MLB Observations of the 2020 season, this time the divisional round. Texas, the whole Simeon Seager 1 and 2, I said, come on. Seager is an all-star shortstop who can drive in 100 runs if he's healthy. That's if. So you'd want him in the middle lineup instead of second. But one day they had Robbie Grossman batting third and Mitch Garver batting third. I'm like, what was the reason behind your success this year? That was because Nathaniel Lowe was batting third. Adoles Garcia was clean up. Josh Young was fifth. Robbie Grossman's a nice bat to have in the lineup, but he's a platoon outfielder DH, and I bat him seventh or eighth. I would not be having Nathaniel Lowe bat and Young bat all the way lower in the lineup. That like that makes absolutely no sense. It really does. And then Dane Dunning pitching out of bullpen. Hey, they won with the rotation that they went with, so that's not bad. You know, with the Montgomery and Avaldi pitching really, really well. And then the rookie Carter, I know he's been great in the month and a half or so that he's been up in the big league, but that's when you bat him with the bottom line of five is way too high. Baltimore, Adley Rushman, I had an issue all season with him batting second and Gunner batting first, or vice versa. But I do like that they put Gunner fifth once and Austin Hayes in the leadoff spot a few times, but then Austin Hayes is not a five hitter. And then Gunnar Henderson again, played shortstop in one game, then moved back to third base, keep him in one spot. No offense to Aaron Hicks, the veteran, or Tedrick Mullins or Westberg, the rookie. They're not middle of the line of hitters to bat sixth and seventh. If you're not going to put Mullins at the top or Westberg in the two spot, then they got to be in the middle. They got to be in the middle lineup. And then I wrote, obviously, one day Adley and Ryan, uh, and Adley was leading off again the, uh, one other time, and they put Ryan Mountcastle second. Like, no, Ryan Mountcastle should be in the middle of the lineup. Just lock and load, keep that going. Jack Flaherty pitching on the bullpen. Did not like that move. Because they lost the Orioles. Their pitching was not what they thought. Like, Kyle Bradish was okay. Grayson Rodriguez was, and Dean Kremer, my guy, was bad. I can admit it, he was bad. I did like O'Hearn, but got one start at DH and bad at fifth. That makes sense. If Baltimore was smart, their postseason rotation would have been Dean Kremer, Jack Flaherty, then you go Kyle Bradish in game three. It's a lot of pressure on rookie Grayson Rodriguez. Because I think I was at one of the games this year that he pitched as a rookie, and he was just terrible. The Sox... We're a bad year team offensively, the White Sox, but they were hitting him. So I'm just like, yeah, I don't know if I want to pressure on that guy. I know Kyle Gibson, people make fun of him, the old veteran at this point. But I would have much rather started with Kyle Gibson or Kyle Bradish in a game three start than Grayson Rodriguez. And I know they really wanted Jonathan Means to come back because he's got an injury. But that I think they lined up the rotation way too much. And then as much as I hated the Adley Rushman and Gunnar Henderson one and two, if they just kept those guys one and two all three games, things might have been different. Could be Mountcastle and Ryan O'Flair, um, excuse me, Ryan O'Hearn in the middle lineup. Probably would have, why they've had success this year. They had their best hitters all coming up, which when Adley, Gunner, Santander, Mountcastle, and O'Hearn, all of them just coming up all at once. That's what they've been successful. Twin, though moving Polanco back between second and third base because you want to play Edward Julian and you want to play Royce Lewis, could. Play Royce Lewis, DH Polanco, because he's never been the world's greatest defensive second baseman or shortstop. So why would you think he's good at third base? But again, we've been over this. He's a perfect five hitter, not a two hitter. Julian leading off is fine if that's who you want in the leadoff spot. But wait, don't waste the DH spot on him. And then Lewis, I know he had an incredible postseason run as a rookie with grand slams, all this stuff, but he's not a middle lineup hitter that you can consistently rely on in the postseason. And I know he's coming off an injury, so he's DHing, but like play him in the infield. Kepler batted fourth once. Another time he batted at the bottom. Just keep him and Correa in the middle line. That's the whole point you have these guys, okay? And Willie Castro, stop playing him in the outfield. He's not an outfielder. He also is batting sixth in the lineup. Is not where you put utility guy. Chris Paddock and Sh- and Kenta Maeda pitching on the bullpen. I know Paddock came back from an injury, so that's excusable. So a lot of we know if he's not a first baseman, he's second baseman, third baseman. The thing I'm going to tell you about the Twins. One of the reasons they lost was because their pitching staff was not good. Because the Astros demolished them. Now I know Pablo Lopez, Sonny Gray, they're good, but I would have given Kenta Maeda the game three start or Joe Ryan it, like. But since, you know, Paddock and my, and, you know, and because, you know, Pablo Lopez pitched in the first round and so did Sonny Gray, I think I would have totally had Kenta Maeda lined up and Joe Ryan instead of over these other guys because Joe Ryan's a good good pitcher. So they kind of did too much with their rotation. Houston, the Altuve, Bregman, one and two. So Jazz Chisholm, excuse me, not Jazz Chisholm, Chaz McCormick and Dubone are the like six, seven hitters. Like, no, 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 no. If Bregman is in the middle of the lineup, I'm not telling him the bat third or fourth. You can keep the Kyle Tucker, Jordan Alvarez, Jose Abreu, 
you know, line up the way it is, you know, because Alvarez is great and Kyle Tucker's had a great season. You want to keep that cool and you want to have Obreu, that's fine. For veteran, you want to fifth, cool. Then bat Bregman sixth and then go Brantley seventh. I just, I don't understand this lineup decisions by them. But again, they're scoring a lot because the guys who I mentioned are doing well. Bregman hasn't done so well in the two spot. He had like one only good one at bat for the most part. And do bone again, stop playing with center field. That's why you have Jake Myers as a backup. The Kyle Schwarber leading off. I'm tired of that. Like a huge uh, strikeout all or nothing guy. Trey Turner batting seconds where he belongs. The Harper playing first base. I have to get over it because them, they're at least the Asian Kyle Schwarber. And moving Marsh to center field and playing Rojas in center field so that makes their defense a lot, lot better. The whole stop, fifth or seventh, like I think he would be perfectly better suited in the top. This is not the typical middle lineup hitter. Cassianos hit two home runs in back-to-back playoff games as a sixth or seventh there. Imagine if Harper, Schwarber, and him, and Romuto, that's what's coming up in the three through six spot. That'd be deadly. And then Michael Lorenzen, they... The prize acquisition of the deadline, he's pitching in a bullpen. Atlanta, I'm tired of Acuna leading off, but I was totally cool with it if, this is a big if, if Alves is batting second and Olsen and Riley are your middle of the lineup. Nope, in one of the games, Riley's batting second, Olsen's batting third, and Alves is batting cleanup, and Michael Harris is batting sixth. I'm like, dude, what was your bread and butter all season? That's that top of the lineup and the lineup the lineup deafness, how de- deep it is from one to nine. Because of Kuna, Albi, Riley, and Olsen, Sean Murphy, Marcelo Zuna, Eddie Rosario, Orlando Garcia, who made the All-Star team this, and Michael Harris. is your one through nine. You keep that the way it is. And their offense did struggle in some of these games. And, of course, their pitching staff did because, obviously, Morton and both Max Fried were injured before the postseason started. And they couldn't have Kyle Wright, so and and the young guy elder like you like, kind of probably out of juice, but Spencer Strider wasn't bad. It's like okay, yeah. If you don't know if your starting staff is fully healthy and able to do it, you just keep the lineup the way it is. They did put Albies back second, and they did put Olson and Riley back in their spot. Michael Harrison back to ninth, but again, RC and Pilar batting seventh. What, I love Kevin Pilar. He's one of my favorite players, and I'm a and he's a fellow Jew. But why in the world is he not? Having Eddie Rosario start when all season long, that dude, when I saw him in person when the, I went to Atlanta, I've seen this dude when he played for Minnesota and Cleveland. This dude just hits home runs. He rakes. He drives and runs. I want that guy batting sixth or seventh in my lineup every single day. Kevin Pillar is a great fourth outfielder for this team. But, again, being cute with your lineup and changing it around and your rotation lineup for some of these teams. Arizona, the Marte, Carroll, one and two, it doesn't matter that order. I've always said Tommy Pham is a good offensive outfielder, but he's not a three-hitter. And Marino is a nice young catcher, but he's not a five-hitter. At least Alec Thomas went from five to seven. But I don't like that Longoria. If you're going to start Longoria the veteran over, like, utility man Jace Peterson or someone else, why don't you just put him in the middle of the lineup? Why bat him all the way eighth? And then L.A., the whole Mookie Betts experiment of him playing second base is so stupid. When you traded for Kiki Hernandez and Ahmed Rosario, and you have Chris Taylor on this roster, I'm like, that's a lot of guys who can play the infield. And, of course... Rojas to shortstop. Like, you got plenty of guys. And I'm okay with Mookie Betts leading off if Freddie Freeman was batting third or fourth, like Matt Olson's doing. I know he's having an MVP season, but it's like, that's where he belongs. And then Will Smith is a good offensive catcher, but I don't, he's not the number, I would not rank him as a top number three hitter. I would say he's a good offensive catcher, I'll bat him fifth or sixth. And then Hayward have to play center field late in the game. Mookie Betts is your best asset. No offense to Freddie Freeman. That asset should be protected every day possible. So you play him in right field, that his best spot. If you want to put him in another spot, you put him in center field. So you can play Jason Hayward in right field. Again, some of these teams are being cute, and the Dodgers just... The reason why the Dodgers lost is because with Urias with domestic violence, Dustin May and Gosselin and Bueller all being out with injury, all you're left with, old man Kershaw, old man Lance Lynn, and rookie starting pitching. And their bullpen is not the world's greatest bullpen. So... That was their downfall. Their lineup usually helps them out. Arizona, you know, Merrill Kelly and Zach Gallen have been great as a one-two punch. Atlanta getting cute with their lineup, and then obviously injuries prevented them from having the rotation they wanted. Philly, I'm tired of the whole weird lineup, you know. But, it, hey, they're scoring a lot. Houston, the weird lineup of Bregman second, it's still working out for them. Twins. Moving Polanco around, moving Julian around, moving Morris Lewis around, moving Willie Castro, moving Solano. That helped them out the regular season. But in the postseason, 
utility players like Solano, Willie Castro, and rookies like Julian and Lewis are not always going to come up amazing in the playoff. Like, that's not it. Your, your guys you rely on are Correa and Kepler. I don't know if Joey Gallo is even on the playoff roster. Killer off one. Buxton then took his spot, and you're just like, okay. You got to have your aces in your places. That's why you have to rely on those guys. I didn't even know if I even saw any Kristen Vasquez behind the play. There's probably a lot of Ryan Jeffers. And their rotation, because they had to play in the first round, they had to use their two best starters to win. I would say Maeda is their third best starter. You got to start your third best starter and your fourth best starter is not playing around. Baltimore, if your bread and brother was your catcher and your third base and batting lead off for second all season for most of the season, stick to that. That was what your success was. And if the other success was with Santander, Mountcastle, and O'Hearn batting three through five, just keep that. Keep what you have going, okay? And your rotation, I'm going to tell you this. Dean Kramer is not biased. He's your best pitcher, okay? You you trade for Jack Flaherty for a reason, okay? Start those two guys in the first two games of a postseason. Maybe it'll be different. And then Texas, in spite of them going Sidman, Seager 1 and 2, and Grossman 3rd, and putting guys like Lau and Young at the bottom, and Carter 5th, they still won. But again, thanks for listening to another edition of the 2023 MLB Divisional Round Observation. For On the Rain and Tay Blog, I'm Raider. See you guys next time.